Hey everyone, welcome to Tuesday, March 12th of 2024. It's time for Tuesdays with Tina. And today, uh, we're going to come, I'm coming to talk with you a little bit about the, basically kind of like the battle of the mandibular blocks, the IA versus Gal Gates, right? These two injections are pretty awesome, IA versus Gal Gates. And what I want to talk about is a little bit about both injections pros, cons, why you might choose one or the other. Not going into great details about how to do these injections. That's something you have to go to class for. But just a little bit of information about those two and comparing and contrasting. So like I said, a little bit of the battle of the Gal Gates. Hello, Facebook friends. Hello. See, happy to see you down there. And hello, Instagram up there. Happy to see you guys. And as a reminder, don't forget um, at any time, you know, because I do these all at different times on Tuesdays. If you've missed any of the Tuesdays with Tina, you can go to Teacher Tina RDH on YouTube to see some of the past ones um, that, that I've reviewed. And so about today, Battle of the Mandibular Blocks. And if you've, if you've been watching for a long time, you know that my man, mandibular teeth, the lower mandibular teeth broke out. I was so sad. So very, very sad when that happened. Oh, oh so sad. And um, you guys be sending good vibes towards my students today that I have my students, my hygiene students are doing their anesthesia competency exams uh, today. I couldn't be there because I had already agreed to be a part of doing a continued education course for a local study club here in my neck of the woods. So when we're done here, I'm going to shower and go do a great CE course, anesthesia CE course for them. So I'm super excited. All right. So the IA versus Gal Gates. Now I'm curious if you uh, give these injections on a regular basis, which one do you like more or less? So as we go through, just in the comments, uh, write down which one do you give more, or which one do you like to do more, the IA or the Gal Gates. Now, if you happen to be somewhere where you're not allowed to do those, or, you, or if you're a student and haven't learned them yet, uh, you know, kick back and enjoy the ride, okay? All right, ooh, there's one right here. Paige, you gotta tell me, did you, how did it go? How did today go? Give me thumbs up, give me some syringe marks, okay? I gotta know. All right, IA versus Gal Gates. These are both mandibular blocks, all right? Um, wonderful injections, really help with getting an entire mandibular quadrant numb. Yay, went good. So happy to hear that. See, I told you guys, today is a big day for my students. I'm so proud. Good job. Good job. Can't wait to see your success pictures. Um, both mandibular blocks. And one of the things that's different about the IA versus the Gal Gates is when we do the IA, right, we're going to get all of the mandibular teeth of the side that we've anesthetized. So molars, premolars, centrals, inside we're going to get the tongue numb, but with the IA, the buccal tissue of these molars is not going to become anesthetized at all. So that's one important thing to remember that just because of the way that the neural flow is, the IA injection will not get that buccal nerve. Now, with the Gal Gates injection, because that injection is higher up on up onto the mandible, like our IA, we are, our target is right here, that mandibular foramen. With the Gal Gates, our target is higher up near the neck of the condyle, which if you remember your anatomy, which, you know, come on. I remember anatomy because I geek out on it, but most hygienists, that's not who we are. <laughs> We're like, we learn it, scrub it, dump it, put it on the test, and you're like, I'll see it again another time. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. So with the, guy, with the Gal Gates, the goal is to, is to hit that injection a little further up on the condyle, uh, because the mandibular nerve follows, comes down and on the medial surface of the mandible all the way down before it enters into the mandibular foramen. So the IA gets it right here before it goes in the mandibular foramen. The Gal Gates hits it up a little bit higher. When it gets up a little bit higher, here's the cool thing, is oftentimes the buccal nerve, that long buccal nerve, which takes care of the buccal tissues of the mandibular molars, oftentimes is still piggybacking pretty close to the mandibular nerve or is hasn't branched off from there yet. So most of a good majority of the time you can get buccal anesthesia when we anesthetize with the Gal Gates. So that is really awesome because we often forget, I wonder, 
how many of you? I know I used to forget all the time to do my long buckle injection after I did my IA, right? I would do my IA and call it good and my poor patients, they'd be like, why? I can still feel that. And I thought I did something wrong with my IA injection. When in actuality, I just forgot to do my long buckle injection. So with your IA, you do have to follow up with your long buckle. With the Galgates, more than likely you don't. Okay, so those are your main two differences on those injections as far as what they anesthetize. One of the other things to remember is with the IA and the Galgate, they're very similar because they are quote unquote contralateral injections, okay? Contralateral injections, meaning the syringe and the needle are coming across the arch, okay? So let me see if I can get a good angle here for you, okay? doing this all backwards in a camera and Facebook has the image one way <laughs> Instagram has the image the other way so they're both going to be across the arch one of the differences is with the IA we stay nice and parallel with the mandibular occlusal plane coming all the way across making sure that we're staying distal to that canine right over the premolars with the IA everything the barrel stays nice and level okay so if I put it like this you're going to see that barrel stays nice and level with the Galgates, what changes is the angulation of the syringe goes in an upward fashion. We don't bring the whole entire syringe up. It goes in an upward fashion so that we can be in that angulation where we can connect up with the condyle of the mandible. So if, I'll see if I can do it in this angle so you can see. Okay, so the IA, we're staying very, very flat across with the gal gates. We're in an upward fashion so we can get into the neck of the condo, All right? That's the other difference. Similarity is barrel angulation being contralateral, staying distal to the canines right over the premolars. IA is nice and level and flat. Gal gates going up at an angle. I always like to say it's like an airplane taking off, which is pretty nice. Um, both of them, you're going to use a long needle. Both of them you want to go until you contact bone, especially with the gal gates. One thing with the IA is going to be a shallower injection. The gal gates is going to be almost like 28 millimeters long. So a long needle can almost is about 30 to 32 millimeters long, depending upon your supplier. Uh, just so you know, Septodont, great needles, love those needles, but they do tend to be a little bit longer than some of the other manufacturers. So their long needles are closer to the 32, 33 millimeter length. Their short needles are about 20 two to 25 millimeters, where some of the other manufacturers, it's a true 20 millimeters or a true 30 millimeter, okay? So just be aware of that. With your IA, Galgates, long needle, still contact bone, you're still gonna aspirate. Galgates has a lower percentage of aspiration than the IA, which is so nice, because how many times, like we don't wanna have to go back in all these to all, over and over and over again to give an, a mandibular injections. Our patients don't want to <laughs> deal with that either. Um, so when you do a gal gates, you're pay less likely to get a positive aspiration. One of the drawbacks to the gal gates is if you are a little concerned about going deep, you know, that could be a problem. But our patients do have to stay open nice and wide because that jawbone needs to articulate forward to expose that condyle so that way we can. Uh, connect up with it to deposit that solution. So have your patient open nice and wide. And then when you're all done with, I, I would say with any of your mandibular injections, but especially with your gal gates or even your Vazirani echinoses, which I didn't touch on today, is to go ahead and have your patient sit up. I uh, let gravity work on your side. There's a suggestion to even prop their mouth open a little bit with a when you do a gal gate, so that way you can uh, allow that anesthetic to flow. Now, for some of you, and again, I have yet to see, oops, I just dropped my anesthetic cartridge. Uh, for some of you, I have yet to see, again, put in the comments, IA or Gal Gates, which one do you like the best? I want to see, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Um, the, one of the things with the, these two injections is I just lost it on my brain. Oh, golly. It'll come back to me. It just goes to show. This is live, and I'm a human. <laughs> I'm not an AI-generated situation right here. Oh, golly, right? <laughs> um, but they're great injections. Um, the Oh, I remember what it was. If you are not a Gal Gates fan, but uh, so you want to always do your IA, I still encourage you to understand how to do a Gal Gates. Oh, you like to do the IA? All right, thank you, Alma. I appreciate that. 
I so encourage you to learn the Gal Gates, understand the principles of the Gal Gates, so that when you struggle with your IA to get profound anesthesia, you know how to make some corrections to uh, go closer towards a Gal Gates, you know, bring your insertion site higher, stay closer to the RAFE. Uh, if you do get a positive aspiration and you don't want to get another positive aspiration, go higher up, get closer towards a Gal Gates injection as well. All right, so that's just a little, a little bit of a, of a difference. Uh, oftentimes people ask me, which one do I do? I like to do, I'm, I'm kind of a Gal Gates girl. I like it. It's, once you got it down, it's very reliable, very reliable injection. Uh, I also like to do the Vazirani Echinoses, the closed mouth technique, which is pretty cool too. All right, so friends, I'm keeping this short because I have to go shower and get ready to do a, uh, a CE course uh, to the local study club here in my hometown, which I'm super excited to get to stay local. Um, oh, by the way, if you didn't know, on Friday, March 29th, today's RDH is doing a virtual CE event, and I'm one of the speakers speaking on medical emergencies, so I'm super excited to be there. So if you want some live CE on medical emergencies, connect up with today's RDH, and you can do that there. Um, let's see, other things that I have coming up that you, um, at RDH under one roof, I'll be there speaking on anesthesia in uh, July, so hopefully you can go to RDH Under One Roof, see you in Denver, and come see me speak on Saturday about local anesthesia. Um, I, there's other like study clubs and groups that are coming up. I, you know, I've got uh, anesthesia certification courses. April in Georgia and May in Georgia are all sold out. June still has some openings. I do have a certification course for Oregon um, that is going on as well. So if you're a hygienist in Oregon and you haven't been certified, you know, let me know. Hit me up and I'll let you know how you can get in with class. With that being said, I'm going to leave you with the quote before I go shower. This quote is from Theodore Roosevelt, and I love it um, because this is such a struggle for me on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, it says, there is nothing brilliant about my record except perhaps this one thing. I do things I believe ought to be done. Uh, when I make up my mind to do a thing, I act. And that's really hard. Oh, there's my reminder to go get ready. Um, that's one of the things is... is I overanalyze some things on a regular basis and and then and don't end up doing it. I like I just ponder and ponder and ponder and ponder and ponder. So uh, friends, help me. Let's do it together. Let's be uh, buddies with each other as we don't ruminate and overthink things and say make of a decision and just do it. Okay. All right. Hi, Brooke. Happy to see you up there. I hope I get some thumbs up from you. Okay. All right, friends, have a great week. Keep the good mojo going out for all those hygiene students out there that are out there being syringe slingers, going through their whole steps of becoming, getting their anesthesia certification. Whether you're a hygiene student or you're a hygienist seeking that, uh, that growth, uh, kudos to you because it is, it's a journey. It's a journey. All right, friends, I'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.